Hello and welcome back to another Pixel Game Maker tutorial. Today I have updated my menu scene mouse plugin and so I'm going to show you how to use it. It's a little easier to understand and the wording is a little more clear. So with that said, let's get started. All right, so the project that I'm going to be using is actually the sample that comes with the plugin. I just removed the plugin so that we can just start from scratch kind of. But this is going to be like your project. You're going to have it already set up. You're going to have your camera system already. You're going to have all this other stuff. How do you implement it though? So this is how, this is how we do it. We'll go to the plugins here and we'll add the plugin. And we just got to find where that plugin is and we're going to add it. Now there's a few params to set up right away. You can see this on the help file. It tells you, or on the help tab, it tells you which way to go right away. But basically what you want to do is you want to set up common act or common variables that are going to store the camera X and the camera Y. So here I've just simply created two variables. It automatically populates onto the common list right here. If it doesn't, if for some reason it's not set, please set that to common and choose common variables. This will work best if it's a common variable. Matter of fact, it's only set up to work on common variables. All right. And so then you can see that we have two link conditions here and we're going to be using async link conditions. If you do not know, you'll have to check out my video on async processing in Pixel Game Maker. It's just, the, it's the easiest way to do this. And so the next thing is, is that you need some animations and particularly in your mouse. So you're going to need a visible mouse and then you're going to need an invisible mouse. So you can see that I just basically took the visible mouse and all I did was take the opacity down. You're going to need both. Now you can see that I set up detections with wall detection and attack detection. Now it doesn't matter how you set up your detections. I do have samples of how I do detections in this, but this is just one way. There are many ways to do detections. The only thing is, is to keep them consistent. So if you have your, your menu mouse here, because this the, the visible one is going to be on your menu scene. The invisible one is going to be on your normal scene. You just want to make sure that they have the same detections. And, and that's really it. Because you want the normal scene to also be able to detect normal scene events. And then you want the menu scene mouse to detect menu scene events, if that makes sense. So once you have the animation for your mouse ready, you can now move on to objects. And so you can see that we have the uh, player here, and that's fine. And you can see that I have a underscore camera and an underscore mouse and viz. So this is how I particularly set up my camera. I'm just using a child system for the camera. It adds a little smoothing. It keeps track within 10% uh, accuracy and 0.1 in the time delay. So this is how I'm using my smooth camera system that will show later on here. But yeah, so this is how I'm using that. And then the mouse in Viz is going to be set up something like this, where it, this can be any detections that you want inside the mouse. I generally would rather have the detections in the objects being detected themselves. But if for some reason you want them in the mouse, you can add them as you please. But here is the async processing. I've put it in a common action here and it's in this link condition right here. So for the invisible mouse, what we need to do is we need to add one of the plugin commands. And particularly we're going to be doing the get camera XY and set the self XY to mouse XY. So it's doing a couple things in this. And then the next thing that we need to know is what is the camera object for your game. Now for this first example, we're going to do the player. So the player is my camera and how I know the player is my camera is you can simply go to the scene and in the others tab, if you have controllable player groups selected, or say you just even have objects, the player selected, that is going to be the player. All right. So it's very particular on, it needs to know exactly what is the camera because it bases everything on the center of the camera. So you need to know which camera it is. So in this first case, we're just going to do the player. All right. And what's funny is, is that I'll have the camera in the, this first thing, but it's actually not going to be doing anything. It's just going to be following, but the camera doesn't follow it necessarily yet. Okay. This is just the camera object that won't be following. So then in the player, I have object connections and you can see that I have the camera object connected and I have the mouse and viz object connected. The reason I did it this way is so that in each scene that I go in, I don't have to have this mouse and viz or even this camera in there. They just are auto populated. Now I wouldn't recommend a child camera like this. If you want to do a lot of camera moving around, I have videos on, on that. I would actually rather generate that in a start action or something like that. 
But the mouse and viz, I'm pretty sure you can get away with having this as a connected object always. And you can see that I have it as a child. But in the invis mouse, I don't I have it I have don't have it set up to follow parent. I don't have any of the parent. It's its own entity, basically. It's just a child so that it can actually move around. If you uncheck this, then you actually it will be stuck to the player. Just for a heads up there. Okay. So then we go to okay. So let's go back to here. This is using this is the mouse and viz child that's on the normal scene. And it's using the mouse and viz animate or motion. All right now, let's go to the mouse menu scene, and you can see that it's using the actual mouse, the the visible one, and it has an async process that we also need to set up. So we'll go to common actions under here, and this time we're going to choose set the menu object x y relative to the mouse x y. So since this is our mouse, this is where we want to set it up, and with just those few functions, we can now. Uh, it's now set up to run. So we can play test this right now. And we can move around. And we can see that the mouse is moving relative to the uh, normal scene. And we can see that this is a HUD object. And you can see that I click on it and it actually works. Okay. And then this is a normal scene object. And I can click on it and it actually works. So we can get the best of both worlds here. Also, it doesn't jitter when you're moving and the mouse is stand still. That was one of the issues that I was running in, or that we would run into if we were using an object on the normal scene, is that there would be a somewhat of a jitter when you were moving. So that gets rid of this as well. So it's a really nice plugin. All right, so now let's go to the event that you're using a different camera. So I'm gonna put start on this one. We can go to the others and we can see that the object is set to use the camera. All we have to do is we go to the mouse and viz, we go to the common action where this async process is running, and we change it to the camera. So now we're saying what camera type we're using. And if we go and play, you can see that there's a smoothing going on, and the mouse is actually staying correctly. And we can still hit everything that we were hitting before, and everything's working as intended. Now, if the smooth camera looks a little jittery, it's because low resolution can sometimes have some jitter in the in the smoothness. I generally don't do uh, smoothing if I'm using a low resolution like this. So yeah, this is the plugin. If there, it's a lot more clear. I changed reference to camera basically, and that made a whole lot more sense because the reference needs to be the camera. And so, yeah, if there's any questions, comments below, we got Steam forums, Discord, many ways to get you figured out. And with that said, I'll see you at the next video.